Shooting with a shallow depth of field is awesome because it can separate your subject from the background. But if you didn't shoot with the shallow depth of field, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the same thing in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. We're a community based around helping you get better at Photoshop and photography. And uh, today we're gonna basically simulate shooting with a shallow depth of field. It's gonna give the subject a nice out of focus look. Um, this is a fair warning. I'll let you guys know, you don't wanna put someone, like if it's a person and they have like a wall right behind them, this is not the case in which you'd wanna use that because they would, you wouldn't be able to see like that much depth of field in the photo naturally anyway. So make sure you, you know, there's not a whole lot of stuff directly behind the subject's head. It can be behind them in the picture, but you know, if it's a tree, you don't want it like one foot away, more like 10 feet away, and it'll just look a little bit more real. The other thing is that this is, it's a Photoshop effect, and it's very hard to like completely uh, fake what would happen in the optic world, because it doesn't, you know, you, it's not like it's a left to the right kind of thing with out of focus to focus. It's like, it, it has to do with depth. So like, this would be, you know, out of focus, I would be in focus, and behind me would be out of focus again. So if you do have something that's complex, uh, that's just gonna, you can still do it, but masking everything's out gonna take a little bit longer. I'm gonna show you guys some tricks and things like that on how to get into it. So here we go. We've got a really cool photo here, and uh, this is perfect because we have, it's, the background is relatively simple. Um, this won't be too hard to cut out, and I can see that like it's gonna go in focus from where, is this Sam, Angela? Yes, it's Sam. All right, from where Sam is, who is Sam? Your friend's son. Okay, so Angela's friend's son is Sam, <laughs> in case you guys were wondering. I was like, who is this kid? Uh, so Sam, is he's going to be in focus where his feet are, and then back here is going to be out of focus. So what we need to do, because we're going to change the focus there, we need to cut Sam out of the background. So that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make a selection here, and you can use a couple of different selection tools. We're going to start off by using the either the lasso tool or the magnetic lasso tool. Magnetic lasso tool is nice because you can basically just click on an edge and if you move your cursor around the screen, the magnetic lasso tool should do a decent job at following that edge around. There we go. So I'm not clicking every time here. I've just clicked once and it's just kind of following the edge of the hair all the way around. It's gonna mess up a couple times, but we're gonna go back and fix this with the regular lasso tool. So don't don't worry if it messes up. You're, just, you're not gonna be able to get this tool to do a perfect job. Um, I use it more as like, you know, this will get you 80 to 90% there, and then you go and do the rest manually. So it's just a little bit of a time saver, but um, you know, it's got, a lot, it's got a lot to work with. There's a lot going on in this picture. All right, and we're just gonna kinda come right up back here and then close out our selection. Just double click to close your selection out. Okay, so you can see the selection's not perfect, but now we're gonna grab our regular lasso tool and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna hold down the shift key, which is gonna help me add to my selection. And we're just gonna select a little bit more of his head, depending on you know, how good you are at moving your cursor around. Sometimes you're better, sometimes you're worse, if you're like me anyway. Um, if you wanna subtract some of the selection out, like here I included the, the ground instead of his hand, um, use hold alt or option and then make a selection like that, it'll select that out. Again, here we wanna hold alt or option and we wanna make sure we get this area selected out as well. All right. Now, keep in mind that you want to do your best selection where the, air, the background is going to be blurred. So here, like his feet, we're really not going to blur that area a whole lot, so we don't really have to have a good selection there. It would just kind of be a waste of time to get, like a, you know, spend a whole lot of time making your selection good if that area is not going to be blurred anyway. All right. There we go, moving in it. So I'm holding Alt or Option now and kind of subtracting these areas out. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's a hard edge selection, um, which is you know gonna be totally fine for this because I'm gonna show you guys some tips on like, we're gonna fix that selection in the end. This is fix the selection apparently, <laughs> if you guys. If it, the universal symbol for fix that selection is this. Uh, I was, we were gonna do it for his hair. Okay, so we've got that area selected out. It looks great. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy this to a new layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J, and that's gonna copy it to a new layer. And uh, now we have two of Sam. He's like, hey, what's up? I always wanted a brother. And you're like, now nah, you got one in Photoshop. Okay. So what we're gonna be doing is blurring the background. And when you blur the background, let me just show you guys what happens here. Let's make a duplicate of that background so we don't, um, you know, so we don't mess up the original. 
what's going to happen is I'm going to zoom in and we're just going to show you this version of it. You can see here in the in the blur that some of the blue from the jacket is entering the blur. And that wouldn't happen. Like in the background, you wouldn't have like a blue blur around you if the background really was out of focus. And the reason why you have that is because it's taking information from, you know, the person who was originally there and it's blurring that also. Um, to get around that, it's really not that hard. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of the background and I'm gonna use my clone stamp tool now and we're just gonna clone stamp from the outside in. Um, I just need to get rid of that area that would possibly show up if, you know, when we apply this blur, I need to make sure that it doesn't look like it's just, uh, you know, part of someone who's already back there. Um, so what I'm using is the clone stamp tool and you could do this on a new layer. I'm using it on a, you know, on a layer copy. Keep in mind, this is going to be blurred quite a bit back here. So it's not, you know, you don't have to do a really great job. Part of Photoshop and, you know, getting quick with Photoshop is knowing, uh, you know, when to spend a lot of time and when, you don't have to spend a lot of time. Um, that was, uh, you know, one of the things that it comes with time and hopefully if you guys watch a lot of learn, you'll learn that as well. But, um, you know, like this is not a good clone stamp job, by the way, this it's not, but most of this is going to be hidden by our subject. We only need, you know, certain parts of him to not be, um, to not be visible. All right, there we go. Okay. So let's see our subject on top. See, you're, you're changing, sorry, most of your clone stamp job is hidden anyway. So that's totally good enough. All right, our subject is on top, our clone stamp job there, and now we're able to do that blur I was talking about. So to do that blur, what we're gonna do is here on this layer, I wanna just go to our uh, filter, we're gonna go down to blur, and then we're gonna go to tilt shift. Okay, and here's our tilt shift blur. You can see it's blurring on the layer underneath. Now, this is a Photoshop CS6 um, filter, guys. If you have something under it, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with like CS5 or CS4. So we're gonna take this and bring it down to his feet because that's what we want to be in focus. Remember, he's like a straight plane. Up and down, that's gonna be in focus. Whatever's in front or behind that is out of focus. So, unless you're using a tilt shift lens, which in this case, we are not. All right, there we go. So this guy, and I'm just gonna drag this up. So what we have is this is in focus and then going up, which is going to the background, that's out of focus. And you can kind of change like, you know, how the, the fall off and things like that. There we go. And that's like, looks something that's relatively natural. You know, if you crank it like this, it's just not gonna be very natural looking, but you know, something like that, I would say that's believable. Okay, now we're gonna hit okay. And you can see it just applied that transformation to the background and we don't have any of like a blue blur around Sam. Okay, now what about the edge? Well, we're just going to, um, let me, I'm gonna, I wanted to show you guys how to do that uh, two different ways. So let's go to filter. We'll just do that same thing again because I, I forgot to make a stamp visible or a copy layer. All right, so we'll just do the tilt shift. Um, again, it shouldn't take a long time. Uh, we're going to do the same one that we did before. And then I'm going to show you guys how to do the same thing if you don't have CSX. Um, there we go. So if you don't have CSX, what you want to do is you'll hit Q for your quick mask. And nope, that, that's not going to be the best way. All right, use your gradient tool. I'm just trying to think of the easiest way. Use your gradient tool and on a new layer, gradient from top to bottom with a foreground transparent gradient on linear. Okay, so gradient from top to bottom, just like that. This is your gradient. Now what we're gonna do is turn this into a selection. So command click that. It's gonna turn whatever's on this layer into a selection. And here in your channels, you're gonna create a new channel and then hit command I on your new channel. So basically you just want a channel that is a gradient, just like that. And the reason I chose to make a gradient while I could see my image is so I could see what I'm doing. Okay, now this layer you don't need. See, it's a little more complex, but you'll, you'll see it'll work in a second. Okay. So this layer you, you didn't need. We've got our channel that looks like this. And now we're gonna go on this layer and we're gonna go to filter. We're gonna go to blur and we're going to go to lens blur. And you guys do have this in CS5. Okay, and here with your source, you wanna choose alpha one. All right, and then you can change here your radius and it's gonna do the same thing. You can see it's not blurring here in the bottom. It's doing a slow blur up to the back. Okay, so basically same thing. You can see they do just about the same thing. 
one of them. In CS6, I prefer the tilt shift, but uh, if you have CS4 or CS5, you can use the other one. Okay, now the last thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a new layer on top of everything. I'm gonna zoom in here and we're gonna use this guy. We never use this in Flurn, but uh, today we are. This is the smudge tool and it basically just smudges some pixels around. It's gonna make this these edges look a little bit better. So smudge tool and we're gonna hit sample all layers. I'm on a new layer and my strength is about 10 to 15%. And you wanna just go in here and just kinda like, if you have a pen or a mouse, just move back and forth like this. So click and then move back and forth. And it's just kinda blend your edges in with whatever's behind you. There we go. So it takes a little bit of, you know, the sand or, you know, the background and puts it over top of your image, puts a little bit of your image over top of the other one. Um, this is different from a refine edge because it actually it mixes the color pixels. Um, refine edge would like, you know, soften in the edge or, uh, you know, feather it or something like that. This actually mi mixes the colors of the pixels. And so it makes for a more realistic transition, especially if you're using a shallow depth of field because um, you would have a, a little bit of a soft edge anyway. So let's just zoom in and I'll show you guys that difference here. So it's a hard edge, it looks kind of fake, doesn't look real. Now it's a soft edge, looks a bit better. All right guys, and that's it. That's taking a regular image just like this and turning it into something with a shallow depth of field and um, basically replicating, shooting at 1.4 or something like that. I hope you guys do the same thing. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the box below. If you have your images and you can submit them, I will be very happy to look at them and tell you what a good job you did and send you a personal thank you and a pat on the back. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching Florin. Bye. <laughs> I couldn't think of what to say. <laughs>